This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info. It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Several generation, generations have rejected these notions. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly message for August 20th. Berber Norquist, the influential conservative activist, recently made some very frank and sobering remarks about the U.S. military budget. Right again. Unlike many conservatives, Mr. Norquist understands that American national security interests are not served by the interventionist foreign policy mindset that has dominated both political parties in recent decades. He also understands that there is nothing conservative about incurring trillions of dollars in debt to engage in hopeless nation-building exercises overseas. Speaking at the Center for the National Interest last week, Norquist stated that, quote, we can afford to have an adequate national defense which keeps us free and safe and keeps everybody afraid to throw a punch at us as long as we don't make some of the decisions that previous administrations have, which is to overextend ourselves and think we can run foreign government. He continues, and Bush decided to be the mayor of Baghdad rather than the president of the United States. He decided to occupy Iraq and Afghanistan rather than reform Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That had tremendous consequences. Nixon now. Nixon now. Richard Nixon said that America's national defense needs are set in Moscow, meaning that we wouldn't have to spend so much if they weren't shooting at us. For 12 years, he's battled the odds in one of America's poorest states. The guys who followed didn't notice that the Soviet Union disappeared, close quote. When a prominent D.C. conservative like Grover Norquist makes such bold statements, it shows that public support for a truly conservative foreign policy is growing. The American people simply cannot stomach more war and more debt, especially with our domestic economy in tatters. The American people should reject the hype about so-called defense cuts from both sides of the political spectrum. When the Obama administration calls for an 18 percent increase in 2013 military spending, those who propose a 20 percent increase portray this as a reduction. Even the supposedly draconian cuts called for in the sequestration budget would keep military spending at 2006 level when adjusted for inflation which is about as high in terms as GDP as during World War II. It also is more than tops the 13 foreign countries spend on defense combined. Further, sequestration only cuts military spending for one year after taking effect. In future years, Congress is free to reinstate higher military spending levels. So under sequestration, the most drastic case would mean spending $5.2 trillion instead of $5.7 trillion over the next 10 years. Is there any amount of money that would satisfy the Pentagon hawks? Even if we were to slash our military budget in half, America easily would remain the world's dominant military power. Our problems don't result from a lack of spending. They result from a lack of vision and a profound misunderstanding of the single biggest threat to every American man, woman, and child, the federal debt. Blockchain.info, it's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Some call it the best site to create a free online Bitcoin wallet. They have apps for Android and iPhone, plus, get this, blockchain lets the encryption for your account happen inside your browser. That way even the site's owner can't access the account. It's just for you. Blockchain.info, it's a great place for Bitcoins to go.